Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I am Mick Alphanine. It has begun. Now, Ripple always said that they might uh, begin, you know, uh, uh, utilizing on-demand liquidity around the world without waiting on the United States. And I guess they got tired of waiting on the United States. They are about to deploy on-demand liquidity in Lithuania, okay? This is significant. This is, I, I think this is one of the best first steps that any of the bank coins has made to deploy their, their particular product. And I'll tell you why. And this is so strategic. Let's get into this, okay? I'm gonna read a little bit of this article here on ripple.com. It tells you a lot, but we have to go to FinC's website. FinC is the, the uh, institution that Ripple is going to be working with. You need to know who they are so you know what kind of money is coming out of there. If you've been on this channel long enough, you know, first thing I did was go to look at their <laughs> quarterlies and their annuals, which I could not find, but that, that was the first thing I went to. Um, but let's, let's just pull up their website here. Do you know that FinC is connected to, let's see if we can bring that page back. Give me one moment, please. FinC is connected to 11,000 institutions. They are about to create a, a, a web of business that is unprecedented. I, I, I thoroughly am excited about what Ripple is doing right now. And um, 11,000 institutions, and that's not counting all of the money that can flow through there. We're going to get to that. That can, that can flow through RippleNet or uh, utilizing on-demand liquidity and XRP as a bridge currency, an agnostic bridge currency, when you're thinking about the other institutions that FinCI will now have access to via RippleNet. That is huge. 11,000 institutions they're attached to. Cross-border payments with FinCI are eight times cheaper than with a bank. Of course, they have that here. 11,000 financial institutions and 200 plus territories worldwide is what FinCI covers. That is major. That's huge. Some of you are, I, I saw what people were posting recently, all the FUD articles. I Didn't I tell you? XRP is at the crux, at the core of what Ripple does. That price will raise, raise a toe. I'm so fired up right now. But let's, let me just give you another piece. I mean, I think I gave you all the information necessary when it comes to XRP and being at the crux of on-demand liquidity, X Rapid, X Current. But let's let Ripple tell you themselves from Ripple.com. Lithuania online money transfer provider FinCI is partnering with Ripple to enable faster, lower co cost cross-border payments with the RippleNet's on-demand liquidity. ODL uses XRP. Oh man, it just feels so, so good, you know, to hear that and, and just to know what's coming. It feels so good. We combat so much FUD, so many liars and people saying things that don't make sense. So <laughs> they always love to say, well, Ripple isn't compelled, like that article, isn't compelled to use XRP. They're telling you, Ripple tells you themselves, don't believe the liars and stuff like you can do what you want. You know, I don't care if you buy XRP or not, but don't believe the liars and the FUDders, okay? This is from Ripple.com. On-demand liquidity uses XRP, the cryptocurrency built for payments to enable frictionless cross-border payments at a fraction of the cost and at a faster rate than traditional payment rails and can possibly bring people generational wealth. Okay, I added that last part. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> but it's true. It's the possibility. It's no guarantee, but it's a possibility. This is fantastic. You know what else was fantastic, right? I was, I was trying to get an update with LightNet. And I'm, I was doing some research. You know, I, I love to kind of dive deep. I just don't always put it out there anymore unless I find something significant. Significant information is what really gets me fired up to make a video. Um, but at LightNet, this is XLM. Okay, let me just, just bear with me for a second. Let me just say this because it's on my mind. I was doing XLM research on LightNet. You know LightNet is trying to replace Swift over there in the Southeast Asian region. They're, they're building their first on XLM, on Stellar. So I was getting an update. And do you know that one of the co-founders of LightNet owns Fortune Magazine. That is a heck. Got to say that. Got to keep it PG on YouTube. That is a significant advantage for a bank coin blockchain to have that type of access to a major magazine that is well-respected and prestigious. 
when they want to flip that switch for LightNet, they have all the advertising they will ever need. That's a heck of an advantage. Sort of like Algorand having, uh, Algorand's another one that has great advantage when it comes to marketing and advertising. When you have race car drivers with Algorand across their chest, when you have billboard space in Times Square, you just had Stacey Wharton on Bloomberg TV. Did you see that? Algorand's gonna explode. XLM's future is bright, and right now XRP is poised to dominate. Listen, right now XRP is out ahead of a lot of the other bank coins right now with this particular move. They're ready to they're ready to go right now. Let's let's read a little bit further. I'm a little bit excited. Just bear with me. We have a lot more coming in this video, by the way. Fincy is following suit as Ripple's first ever Lithuanian customer poised to reap the benefits of on-demand liquidity and open up a new corridor between Europe and Mexico. Oh, I told you Mexico's going to explode. They're doing so well. They're, they're, the real estate there is beautiful. They got big businesses moving and Mexico's looking beautiful right now. Mi gente. Ooh, it's muy linda. I'm so like, this. I haven't been fired up like this in a long time. I'm feeling so good. But here, let's just get a, a little bit of information on Latin America. We've got to give you some information here. This is from Pew, PewResearch.org, right? It says the share of Latin American, American and Caribbean immigrants living in Europe reached 12% in 2017, up from 7% in 1990. Within Europe, Spain was the top destination country, home to 2.2 million people born in Latin America and the Caribbean in, uh, in 2017, an increase of about 2 million, 2 million. So, and that's just the people they can count. Let me tell you something, that's just the people they can count. There's a lot of people you can't count for a myriad of reasons, okay? So this is just what they know about, but that number is going up. So the money coming out of there, out of all of these so-called developed countries, it's going to be flowing into Latin America. Who's in Latin America? Our money is in Latin America. XLM is deep in Latin America. Algorand is the deepest in Latin America. And you know Ripple is deep in Mexico, Mexico, and all over the place in Latin America. The bank coins are deep there. We want that money flowing in. That, oh, the money is going to be so good. But look at that increase, right? So, so then also, let's go to payments.com. I love payments.com. They have very good information there. So it says Latin America is a vast untapped market. Remember I've been saying that? The traditional bank systems can't access all of that money in Latin America, but we can. Oh, the money is going to be so good in my humble opinion. Latin America is a vast untapped market for the payments industry, says Gabriel Car Carvajalino. Carvajalino, sorry about that. Ugh, brain brain uh, freeze. VP Network Development, LATAM, and Thunes. As companies look to expand there, expect more demand for seamless, convenient cross-border payment options. That's what, like I told you, they're going to be adopting these bank, bank coins and mass Latin America is a place to watch. It says here, soaring B2B cross-border payments market. This is what I wanted to really get to. We're gonna snatch so much of that B2B. Don't forget about the B2B. So many people talking about the retail. Retail is important, but that B2B is massive. I told you it's north of $100 trillion. Let, I'm going to let payments.com tell you. Increasingly, business in Latin America are seeking more seamless, efficient, and secure ways to make cross-border B2B transactions. Forecasts suggest that the global cross-border transactions will grow to $156 trillion in 2022. $156 trillion dollars wait a minute there's more with b2b payments accounting for 150 trillion dollars what is xrp's one of the things xrp is going to be doing in lithuania i mean uh uh, uh, uh with fincy of lithuania b2b payments oh yes i gotta be a little bit excited because there's so many dry spots <laughs> When it comes to business, when it comes to the bank coins, we get something that's uh, exciting. I, I, I feel really good. $150 trillion, and this is where Ripple is starting. Starting. They're going to take a significant portion of that, in my humble opinion. Let's go back to Ripple.com for more. This is Ripple's new value report found that 
of European financial institutions surveyed believe blockchain will have a significant impact on their business in the next five years. There goes those numbers again, four to five years. <laughs> you think it's a coincidence? You think they haven't sat in briefings? You do know Ripple has. Remember I showed you recently, Ripple even had a presentation last year with the International Monetary Fund that they said nothing about. I showed you the slides on here. Okay, they, they, they manipulated the date on that presentation so it's not easily found. But that video had the slides, some of the screenshots of the slides in that video. And I believe the, the name of the individual who hosted that. So Ripple is sitting down in meetings behind the scenes doing presentations for International Monetary Fund, European Central Bank, I would assume, Bank of International Settlements as well. We know they have a good relationship with them. Um, they have even used, Bank of International Settlements has even used Ripple by name and XRP in some of their PDFs. Fearless, the BIS is, fearless. <sighs> Whew, this is getting really, really um, intense and exciting. Let's read a little bit more here. So look at that percentage of, of businesses that believe that they're going to be sending money via blockchain. 70% of European financial institutions surveyed, 70% believe uh, blockchain will have significant impact on their business in the next five years. And 59% of those respondents are already interested in using their technology for payments. This is why Algorand has their European accelerator, which we need to get an update on, by the way. They just gave us an update recently on their Miami accelerator. We have to stay up to date with these things as researchers, okay? That's why we always know where that money is coming from. The research, the catalyst, that's important. Don't get me wrong, charts are important too, but when it comes to utility, you need to know about those partnerships. You need to know the money that's coming out of those corridors. It's up to you to know where that money's going to, how much money is going to come so you know whether you wanna hold, you wanna sell, you can make those decisions for yourself and who do you trust? Who should you trust more than yourself? Trust yourself. Be a researcher like us. Let's go a little further. Fincy is following suit as Ripple, Ripple's first ever, ever Lithuanian customer poised to reap the benefits of on-demand liquidity and open up a new corridor between Europe and Mexico. Both business, Europe and Mexico, both business to business payments, muy linda mi gente, business to business payment rails and retail remittances are common international payment flows in this Eastern European nation. Just remember, they're not only going to be operating there, all right? This will be widespread use. So using on-demand liquidity will mean streamlining payments for their enterprise and the individual. In addition to gaining access to other partners in the room, didn't I just say that? I just said that a little, little while ago. In addition, it's just logical, to gaining access to other partners in the Ripple network. Not only that, this, will, this is a good uh, uh, um, example for other institutions who might be interested in the result, the actual results of using XRP on demand liquidity, X rapid, whatever it's going to be. And they'll be able to watch and they will and see the benefits of it. Then they will be more willing to jump in if they're sitting on the sidelines, which it seems like a lot of them are not as it, what did it say? 59% are ready to use blockchain technology right now. That's also why I've been saying for a long time, we have to pay attention to the monetary policy decisions of the European Central Bank. BIS is not really a problem. And the IMF, IMF can be problematic at times because their policy uh, uh, can have a huge effect on institutions wanting to adopt those particular technologies. So we can always make phone calls. We can always use our votes if, if you believe that makes a difference. Vote, call your politicians, um, whatever you have to do. But first we have to know that there's a problem. Is there a problem? Is there not a problem? Do we need to act? We can only know that by knowing what monetary policy they're enacting. That's why that's important, especially in Europe, which now seems like they may be the first to explode when it comes to using on-demand liquidity and liquidity tokens outright. Stellar is in deep there. Don't you ever forget that. They're, we're working with the oldest bank in Europe. I've been saying this since last year. They put out their stable coin via Stellar, right? We'll, we'll wait to see the results of that, but that's just beginning steps. Of course, if they're satisfied with that initial offering, they're going to expand use of the product. It was the same thing with um, 
Santander and XRP. I mean, uh, Ripple, sorry about that. Ripple made a first offering to Santander, right? Which didn't uh, have to utilize XRP. That's just the first offering. But obviously this is a test. So Santander can, can, uh, can experience the product and then they will it's, it's, and then they will be able to to decide if they want to use the higher level or higher end product which is on demand liquidity x rapid so on and so forth right which as they say here now fincy will not have to worry about pre-funding <laughs> they will be able to leave all of that behind let's just see there was something else here there's actually an article i have pull, pulled up here i have so many tabs on this computer is ridiculous. I need to get a little bit more <laughs> organized with these, but I think in spots, so I tend to open the tabs in spots here. But in within one of these articles, it was saying that Fincy will uh, be able to utilize that pre-funded cap capital to allocate it to make even more money. That's just logical. Um, so, and it also said that, as we all know, that if you are still, after this point now, if you are still using pre-funding of accounts, like with Swift, that pretty much that's just, dead money like that. it's just money that's just sitting there wasted because now with the advent of on-demand liquidity now being deployed is no need for that imagine all of that pre-funded money flowing into xrp the, the price would explode this is just the beginning don't ever forget that this is just the beginning trickles of water this is not the flood this is trickles but this is going to be great to observe uh, so I had some other articles here, but I don't want to keep you guys here too long today. Um, Russia may legalize. Let's just go over that real quick. Russia may legalize crypto. That has huge implications. Decentralized protocol are not controlled. Russia can build their own infrastructures and still just conscript all of those. Some of those liquidity tokens. I'm not saying any names. They can conscript those, liqui those liquidity tokens just like Ukraine was going to use. And they can use them themselves. So I'm not saying that's going to happen, but they're looking at legalizing. And it says here, this is on Reuters. OK, so it's a reputable source. It says Russia will sooner or later legalize. This is coming from their minister. Russia will sooner or later legalize cryptocurrencies as a means of payment. Industry and trade minister Denis Mantarov said on Wednesday. I'm just going to leave you with that. That has huge implications across the board. We'll see how what they choose to use. Could make that price explode. I don't know how you feel about that. There can be ramifications from certain world powers if that were to occur. All right, I'm, I got to be careful on YouTube talking talking about these certain things, but you know, keep our eyes open for these catalysts here. Let's just read a little bit further here. This uh, this article is tremendous by Ripple. Check out, go to Ripple.com or their Twitter and read this article. Fincy end users will also be empowered to leverage the full scope of their cross-border payment with an, an efficient, affordable alternative to traditionally expensive payment rails. They're talking about SWIFT. So even with Ripple playing nice with SWIFT over this recent body of time, they're still attacking SWIFT's market. They're still trying to take, <laughs> take SWIFT, SWIFT's market and there's nothing SWIFT can do about it. Money, 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 money. <laughs> Ripple, keep doing your job. I'm, I'm very, um, I'm very happy with this. And uh, another, uh, another members only video is probably going to come out tomorrow. We have, we have some things we need to go over. This is a beautiful time to be alive. It really, really is. In my humble opinion, there's, don't get me wrong. There's struggles across the board, but nothing good comes without a fight. You got to fight. Nothing good comes without a struggle. First, the farmer must go, must plant the seeds and till the ground and water. It is hard work before you see your crops. And we are farmers. We are warriors. We train first so that the fight, we train hard so that the fight can be easy. But first comes the hard work. So we're going through struggles in the world right now. Make it through the struggles and maybe, just maybe, I think there's a high probability that it's a beautiful time to be alive. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So now that you have that information, what are you going to do with it? I know what I'm going to do with it. So until next time, let's get to the money.